Hi everybody! Today is a long-awaited video where I finally show you all the different ways that you can use the Learning Resources Hundreds board. If you're new here, my name is Bailey and I am a stay-at-home mom of three children. My boys do typically go to school when we're not in quarantine, but I am the type of mother that likes to have these types of resources available for them when they need extra practice on any type of subject. And so that's what I'm going to show you today is all the different ways, about 15, I think, different ways um, that you can use particular math topics with this board. Make sure if you like this video, you give it a thumbs up so that I know which videos you're liking. And there's about 87% of you that are not even subscribed. So make sure you hit the red subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. So first and foremost, let me show you what all is included in the hundreds board box. So first you get your plastic board here that on one side has the numbers 1 through 100. And the main reason why I wanted this board and not a Montessori wooden board is because each number has its own individual slot for the tiles to fit into so that it didn't so that it then will not shift. And that was very important for me because I have a child that that would have extremely irritated if the chips kept, or the tiles kept moving around. Um, and then on the other side is blank, which can help uh, make things uh, rise in difficulty. And so that is the board itself. Then we have the number tiles themselves, uh, obviously one to 100 um, and then I do like that they have the line on the bottom just to show um, for some of these six and nine type numbers which way they should face and then we also have these translucent tiles that are red and blue and I can show you plenty of activities that we're going to use these for as well and then of course pretty standard for anything you buy comes with the little pamphlet that shows you all the different ways that you can use it and just give you a little bit further explanation um, and so a few of the ideas that i'm going to show you today did come from here um, and then i will definitely show you some more interesting ideas as well so let's get started I am going to attempt to work my way up in difficulty. So I'm first going to show you things that you can do with your little kiddos and then work our way up in more advanced skills. Uh, so first off, I'm going to show you one of my favorite things to do with my little kids is working on one-to-one -one correspondence. Now this is what I always used with my boys when they were little. And this is a worksheet that you can find, a free printable from confessionsofahomeschooler.com. And I will have that link down below for you if you are interested and I did laminate it and it is uh, double-sided to work our way up to 10 if we would like but one thing with using something like this is that whatever manipulative you're using does have the possibility of shifting around which I did mention was always a problem with one of my kids and so that's where the hundreds board could come in handy uh, because it has the individual slots then my counters will not shift around and they will stay in their place and I think okay there we go so if you wanted to just work from one to five you could do that that is an option or you could go all the way to ten now because these tiles do take up one slot here if you were to go down to ten you would not have enough we only have nine spaces here so you could either have one counter um, just sit on the edge here or you could move the tiles over and have them here and only the counters within the slots it's completely up to you um, right now I'm just going to leave it as is since it's already set up and so in the end this is what you would have now I did end up running out of some Halloween counters so I had to switch to some stars but you can catch my drift here so the perks of doing this particular activity having all of the numbers in uh, on one side of your board you know compared to having a two-sided paper like this is that you can then have a clear visual of how adding one to each number is going to build your way up to ten in this little triangle shaped form and it just makes it clear cut for them to see um, how just adding one more will get you to the next number Another activity we can do with our little kiddos, our toddler, preschool age children, um, is working on patterns. Since we have these colored tiles, why not use them? I mean, they're here at our disposal. So, 
what you can do is start very simply just by switching off the red and blue and do an A, B pattern. Nothing too difficult with that at all. And then, like I said, you can just work your way down the list in difficulty of patterns. Now, when my boys were kids, this is what I used for them. Is this free printable from thisreadingmama.com. Again, I can link this down below for you. But this also gives them a guide for doing patterns and it goes up in difficulty as well. And there's even another worksheet that has blank ones for them to make their own patterns. But you can just use this as a guide if you would like some help. So first we're gonna do A, B pattern and then we can do A, A, B, B. And again, we have the colored tiles here to work on that. So let's, oh, let's switch that over. So A, A, B, B and so on and so forth. Now, if we were to work our way over to A, B, C, C patterns, then all you would need to do is use our white number tiles and just flip them over. And so then the white can then be your C uh, pattern. So let me go ahead and demonstrate one of those as well. And so again, this is just a great way to have the manipulatives, the different colored tiles here, and then having these convenient little slots keeps things from moving around. And then like I said, I like having this particular worksheet as just a guide for the different patterns they would want to work on. Probably the most basic activity you're going to use with this hundreds board is just plugging in the numbers where they go on the number side of the board. This is going to work on number recognition, number matching, and just getting from one to 100. From that point, you can use this um, board all filled out just like this as your hundreds chart. And let's count from one to 100 together. Now, if you're working with a little bit younger children that aren't quite at that level, maybe only give them one to 50. And let's just do half of the board right now. And later on, we'll work our way up. Um, it's really up to you and where your kids are at. From there, the next point you would go to is then um, taking these off of the number side, which provide them with help and guidance and switch them over to the blank side of the board. And they'll then have to do this all by themselves and making sure that they have the numbers in the correct order. That's really going to raise up the difficulty here. And one family tradition that we have is my parents love to be the ones to give their grandkids a dollar for the first time they're able to count from one to 100. So this board is really going to help them uh, practice that skill and get them to earn that fun dollar. So now that we have the numbers on the blank side of the board here, as you can see, now we're gonna just take some numbers away and we are going to have our kids uh, find the missing numbers. Now you can do this one of two ways. We can just hand them the tiles and put them in a bowl and then have them plug in these missing numbers themselves. But what that's gonna do is provide them with hints of what numbers they're looking for. So they know that these are the numbers they're looking for and they should have to figure out where they go. Or you can do option two and take these numbers away completely and they really have to figure out for themselves, uh, well, this is 41, this is 43, so that means this has to be 42. And then from there, you can give them back the tile and put them in if you want to or just leave it the way it is. Um, but plugging in missing numbers is going to be your next skill from here. Once we start getting into kindergarten, first grade type level work, uh, the next thing we're going to work on is finding a number or picking a number and then doing the one less, one more, 10 less, 10 more. And so again, this is something you see in worksheets all the time, but let's use our movable tiles. So what we're going to do is start um, kind of simply and I'm going to choose the number 16. So for this, I'm going to use our white number tile and this is going to show, this is the number we're working on. From there, we're going to use our colored um, translucent tiles. So you can pick whichever one you want, but for the one less, one more, let's use red. So one less than 16 is 15 and then one more is 17. And so if you also had a worksheet to plug this in, um, the children can then see clearly which numbers they need to put in on their worksheet. Then when we wanna do 10 less and 10 more, we'll use our blue tiles. And so 10 less would be the number six and 10 more would be 26. Now it seems a little dark here on um, the video, but in person you can see through the blue uh, just fine to see the number there. 
So kind of along the same lines of making patterns, now we're going to talk about skip counting. Now we as adults know that skip counting in itself is going to create its own patterns. So let's demonstrate that to our children. So first we're going to start with counting by twos. Now pick whichever color you wanna use. I'm going to do red just because it's a little bit easier to see on the screen compared to the blue. Um, and so let's count by twos. So demonstrate to them um, that one, two, we're gonna put one. Then one, two, we're going to place another one. And so then they'll start to see um, that the every other number is where we're putting a tile. Then together you'll count by the two. So two, four, six, eight, ten. Um, so they can obviously see that there is a pattern here. On the same note, if you wanted to switch um, to the blues and say, okay, this time we're going to count the odd numbers, which is going to take us into our next activity here. These kind of merge together. So not only do we have skip counting, but we're also going to bring up the concept of odd and even. Now, if you wanted to put these in two different activities, by all means, but for the sake of this video, they kind of go together. So now let's talk about odd numbers. We're still ca counting by twos, but we're talking about odd numbers here. So we have one, three, five, seven, and nine. Again, they can see that there's a pattern here. And so this is going to clearly show them that the red numbers are even numbers and the blue numbers are our odd numbers, but we are still counting by twos and we have plenty of color tiles here to work our way um, down through the board. Um, and so that is skip counting by twos. Now, along these same lines, I happen to have a worksheet here that I literally ripped out of a workbook. Um, I'm sure you can find some online if you needed a printable, um, but I like to just use workbooks that I have here around the house. And so on this one, we're talking about counting by twos and fives. So what they can do now that they have shown um, the even number here, is it looks like that's all they're working on is even numbers. Um, once they have two, four, if they needed help, they can now reference the board to plug in that the six goes in the missing spot here. And again, once they work down the board, they can start um, seeing that as well. And then work their way down all the way through um, the worksheet. So as you can see here, next we're going to start counting by fives. Now again, they're going to see a whole nother pattern here. So let's do fives. We have five, 10, 15 and 20 and obviously work your way down the board, but they're going to see a whole nother pattern here by counting by fives. And again, use this as a reference to plug in their answers for their worksheet. So earlier in the video, I mentioned that my parents like to give their grandkids a dollar when they're able to count from one to 100. And then now we just mentioned skip counting. I'm going to mix these two concepts together by plugging in money with our hundreds board. So now that we've worked on skip counting with our tiles, we're now going to switch it over to coins and show them how the coins equal the same as when they're doing skip counting. Uh, so let me demonstrate that to you. So first we're just going to work on the actual value of the coins themselves. So we know that one penny is the same as one cent. So this is going to be for every one. And then if you had enough, which I do not because they're always going missing, <laughs> if we had a hundred pennies here, we would see that the board would be all filled up. So then we know that 100 pennies is the same as one dollar bill. Again, I don't have a dollar bill to show you. The boys took off with them somewhere, but <laughs> we can show that this board equals one dollar. And so that's how many pennies are inside of a dollar. And so this is just going to help them connect the dots of what 100 cents means. That means one dollar. Okay, and we can do the same thing for each of the other values here. So we have a nickel for every five that we see. So five, 10, 15, 20. And so when we fill that in, they're gonna see how many nickels equals a dollar. Same thing for the quarter or the dimes and the quarters. So every time we have a 25, 50, 75, 
a dollar. They're going to see that there are four quarters inside of a dollar. Um, and so, again, same thing with the dimes, uh, but this is just going to help them really understand the uh, value of each coin themselves. Another thing I love to do is show them how the different things are equal to each other. So, we have 10 cents here. We can show that 10 cents is the same as two nickels because we know that there are two nickels within each line because we're counting by fives. So we're going to connect their uh, concepts of skip counting in with their money. We know that there's two nickels inside of each line because of we're counting by fives. And that is the same as 10 pennies. Same thing with our dime. 10 pennies is the same as one dime. Okay, and so that's how we're going to plug this in. You can do the same thing with pennies to quarters or whatever the case may be. 25 pennies is the same as one quarter. And so this is just really going to help them really understand what each one of the values of the coins means. Because they might know that a nickel is five cents, but do they know what that means? Um, and so this is just going to help them really connect all of the dots. 